One of the activities that I enjoyed the most was a group wiki. So we were supposed to uh, look for resources uh, regarding just what this specific uh, learning theory. And then we were supposed to bring those uh, resources together. I never met any of them. We were working all over America. Some of my classmates were in California. Another one was in, um, I think, New York. We were uh, bringing all these resources. We were working on the same page. On uh, I think the class we took, it was a course we were taking Blackboard. So we brought all these resources. We were sharing materials. We were sharing ideas. We were ed editing this one wiki. And um, I really enjoyed the, co the activity because we can easily see who was working or not. It's, it was like different because in a, what usually happens to me is that uh, I'm the one who ends up doing the, most of the, the, the work, but we all get the same grade. So that was not really cool, but when you work online, it's hard to hide. A lot of the interactions that I had really, um, that I found very effective were the uh, online discussions. Um, because you can't see everyone face to face and because it is asynchronous, um, the ability to have a discussion and go back and forth uh, is great because, again, you're bouncing ideas off each other, uh, but also learning from each other. And that was one thing that I found pivotal as opposed to reading through lectures and such because a lot of the, the people that I dealt with in my classes uh, were expertise in different fields, uh, but it all kind of drawed together. And that was a thing that I found uh, was really crucial in the long run. I think that uh, instructors should take more of the moderator of interaction. When I say moderator of interaction, uh, I mean that uh, an instructor is not the center of attention anymore, is not the one who is telling everybody what uh, they should do or how to do it, but is more uh, the one who allows and guides that interaction. Uh, the interaction with uh, content and with each other in a class, in a course, in an online course, is really the center of attention because you need to read, you need to study, you need to interact with your peers. You cannot just wait until everyone is doing their work and then you jump in. You need to be active. And instructors need to be the ones who are encouraging that interaction with both material and with peers. Um, it's very important for the instructor to, you know, constantly reach out and show him or herself as being available um, to, to the student and be able to create that, um, you know, that, that traditional relationship between um, student and instructor, even if the physical contact, the face-to-face um, relationship and the ability to relate one-on-one -on -one like that um, is not possible. Uh, it's critical. Um, one of the things that I found the most was uh, being online. A lot of students are apprehensive at first to communicate and I found within the second week or so um, I myself branched out a lot to other people by sending private messages just to say hello, this is who I am. Uh, but the introductory period in the beginning of the, the uh, semester really helps because I think it really does act as an icebreaker with the other students. And uh, I find now I'm friends with uh, a lot of them on Facebook in addition to keeping up with them on email and uh, different research projects. And such. So it's, it's definitely critical, that's for sure. Number one is um, communicate. You need to let um, students know how you are going to communicate. Are you going to use email? Are you going to use uh, discussion boards? How are you going to communicate? And um, try to do it as early as possible. And throughout the course uh, of the course that uh, they know uh, what they need to do and how they are going to complete assignments and when they need to submit them. Communicate as much as possible and as early as possible. The second tip I may give is uh, set expectations. Let students know what they are um, expected. They need to know 
how they need to submit the assignments, where they need to submit them, if they're going to have, uh, um, if they can submit assignments late or not, or, and when. Uh, so providing this, for instance, providing syllabus as early as you can, let the students uh, know how they should work is very important. The number one tip I would say is definitely lead by example. Um, definitely be responsive to the student, um, not to the extent that you're actually going to spoon feed the student, but to be respectful and to treat them the way that you would want to be treated. Because a lot of times it can be an alienating um, place that you don't really have that contact and that reassurance of having someone actually look at you and be able to return that gaze? Um, in the long run, what I would suggest always is, um, you know, understanding the plight of the student. Um, some of your students are going to be up late at night, possibly early in the morning. A lot of them, in my time, I've found work, um, you know, extensive amounts of jobs and things like that. And um, the ability to have that communication and direct communication with the faculty member is crucial. Um, but also the technology aspect. Um, I deal with a lot of faculty members that, let's say, uh, for biology, um, their expertise in their field, technology may not be a strong point. Um, so what we've always done is worked with them on building up that strength uh, and then moving on to add everything from images to videos to things like that that really kind of spark students um, as opposed to the traditional lesson plan.